This is Ring of Honor's Ian Riccoboni, and you are in the Wrestling Epicenter. You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio, featuring the interactive interview, courtesy of WrestlingEpicenter.com. Gobble, gobble, son! Like a turkey do! All right, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving right here at WrestlingEpicenter.com. It is James Walsh. Your humble host doing a terrible, terrible Teen Titans Go turkey impression, as well as a off, and I can do it better than that, but an off Michelangelo impression from the 2012 edition of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Enough me nerding out. Let's nerd out on wrestling, shall we? So today we have uh, two interviews for you this Thanksgiving weekend. And they are going to be with Southern Illinois Championship Wrestling star, Curtis Wild, who's just an interesting character. I think you guys are going to enjoy this one. As well as Ring of Honor main television announcer, Ian Riccoboni. Two interviews to be feasting on this Thanksgiving weekend. Hope you guys enjoy them. And thank you again for checking out WrestlingEpicenter.com. Enjoy. This is Punishment Martinez from Ring of Honor. You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio. Welcome back to Interactive Wrestling Radio right here on WrestlingEpicenter.com. My name is James Walsh, and joining us is a gentleman who I specially requested an interview with because I actually really like what he does. He is the lead announcer for Ring of Honor Wrestling, Ian Riccoboni. Mr. Riccoboni, are you with us? I am. Thank you for having me, James. It's a pleasure to have you on. I got to tell you, and, and this is my nature. And I said that I really enjoy what you do. I have a knee-jerk reaction to change. So when something changes, my first instinct is not necessarily to embrace it, to really enjoy it. You kind of seamlessly took over the role from Kevin Kelly uh, and really did a great job with Ring of Honor. So I wanted to, first of all, tip the hat to you and say thank you for taking the reins and not really missing a step. I I certainly appreciate that. You know, Kevin is... uh is super talented and he, he's been a friend and a mentor and he's been somebody that I've always really looked up to. And, you know, sometimes he would tell me to, to be quiet when I tell him just how old I was when I saw him when, when Brian Pillman, uh, you know, when he was working with Brian Pillman and it's stone cold. Uh, but he's a guy, he's a, a pros pro and uh, one of the few guys ever to participate in WrestleMania and Wrestle Kingdom and final battle. So somebody that I really looked up to and, you know, I knew the stakes were pretty high, uh, when I accepted the position, but you know, I'm just glad that we we had the support system that we have. That I was able to be mm-hmm. Evan, and, and we have some great producers as well, some of the unsung guys. All right. Well, I did want to tell you that I, I do have, and I don't know how much this speaks to much, but I hold announcers in high esteem not only because what I do with doing this show, and I actually went on a little bit of a rant a few weeks ago. We'll get to that a little bit later on some of the online commentators who maybe don't do their research before the events, but watching you guys do it, you're a true pro. I appreciate you doing that. And I have bad vision. So you kind of fill in the blanks. Sometimes if I miss something, you guys help to fill in those blanks. So I probably appreciate you guys as announcers, maybe a little bit more than the average viewer. But um, anyway, just wanted to throw that out there to you and put that little feather in your cap. Quick question for you. Thank you. Um, Let's take a step back to when you started in journalism. Um, I did a lot of research leading into the interview, and I saw that 
You worked with a minor league baseball team as well as with Phillies Nation. What was it like to be part of that whole major league baseball, unbelievable America's pastime experience? Sure. So that was actually something that, you, you know, you, you come out of college and you're looking for an opportunity uh, to to do something in the field that you went to school for. And so I was fortunate enough to, uh, over the years, meet a guy named Pat Gallen, who's now a local Emmy winning uh, anchor for CBS3 in Philadelphia, and also a guy, Corey Seidman. Yeah. And I had met them, you know, just through posting online, through Twitter, through visiting uh, philliesnation.com, which is a, had been an established, um, you know, website. And so, you know, through talking with them, I, I got the opportunity to write for them. And in my first year, we were the we were USA Today's number one baseball blog in the country, which is a, a nice feather in our cap. And then from there, um, I had, you know, I had a friend that was, had worked on Conan O'Brien and Saturday Night Live, and he was looking to kind of continue his dream as well. A stand-up comedian, so he had created a, a public access show uh, called Hump Night with Chris Freed. Uh, it aired every Wednesday night, and uh, it was a it was a really fun show. It was a good local show. Um, made some nice contacts at Service Electric Cable in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and so after I joined the Phillies blog, uh, we had started to do some blogs, some video you know video blogs, and then they were pretty decent and high quality. Uh, so I said, hey, why don't we take these to Service Electric and see if we can get on the air with them? And, and sure enough, that's what we did. And, you know, through that experience, I was able to meet, you know, just about anybody and everybody from the Phillies run, my favorite of which being Cole Hamels, uh, just a great athlete, uh, but also uh, very generous with his time and, you know, so much more. And then, um, you know, Cole was always great. But also, you know, Carlos Ruiz and the recently passed Roy Holiday um, was a guy that was great to, to speak to as well. So, you know, it just it was a, it was a great time to to be around baseball and be around those guys. Um, I primarily covered the minor league teams, but I would meet with those those guys at, at gala type functions where they'd be appearing and uh, cover those events. So um, it was really cool to to be a part of that and to be able to, you know, be around baseball, which has always been my first love. So it, it, those opportunities, oddly enough, led me to professional wrestling. And it was through Phillies Nation TV where I began to interview famous Phillies fans, including the Blue Meanie and, and Mark Summers. Um, Blue Meanie, of course, led me to the Monster Factory, which led me, uh, you know, all the way to the madness that we're into now. <laughs> so. Very cool. Well, that's awesome. That was one of my questions. How did the How did the wild road go from Major League Baseball all the way to – the world of professional wrestling. I guess that was through the Blue Meanie. Yeah, you know, the Blue Meanie has a lot to do with it. Um, he he doesn't like to take credit, uh, but he was the guy that said, hey, why don't we do our interview at the Monster Factory? And then he was the guy that, you know, suggested, why don't you ask Danny Cage, who runs the Monster Factory, how to get involved? And so he was the guy that kind of instilled all the confidence in me right out of the gate um, to, you know, ask those questions and to, go down those routes. And so, you know, I, I still hold him in very high regard. I speak to him quite often. Um, definitely somebody that, that I really appreciate having met and, and means a lot to me. So yeah, we went, we went from baseball to wrestling pretty quick. And for, for a while, for about three years, I, I did both. Um, I even put out a book, the 100 greatest yes. Phillies of all time. I was going to ask you about that. And, and there's kind of a joke reason why I'm asking, but did Lenny Dykstra make your list of the top 100 Phillies of all time? Oh, he sure did. I believe he was number 29. Okay, cool. I ask that because I'm pretty sure some wrestling journalist back when Ken Doan, who became Kenny Dykstra in the WWE, uh, when he first did it, Every week, a news reporter, and I won't name names, kept posting like he had just cracked the code to, to cure cancer, that the reason he calls himself Kenny Dykstra is because he really loved Kenny Dy uh, Kenny Dykstra, uh, Lenny Dykstra. So, Lenny Dykstra, yeah. <laughs> I, kind of, I kind of always made a joke of that throughout the years. That kind of used to be our sign-off. And by the way, Kenny Dykstra chose that name because he really liked Lenny Dykstra. So there was always little, little things that I uh, tie back to everything. So... Just a tip. Right. <laughs> so is it cool to have that book out there? And, and yeah, you are a published author. That's pretty cool, too, as well as a wrestling journalist. And 
that wrestling journalism is kind of what I wanted to ask you about. I know that your Wikipedia says that you attended a Ring of Honor tryout. And I guess my question would be, were they looking for announcers? Or how does one find its way into the announce booth like that? Sure. Um, you know, Ring of Honor at the time was actually not looking for announcers. Uh, what they had in mind was uh, they were looking for wrestlers. They needed uh, folks to come in through the tryout camp, and they were looking for folks to put in uh, the top prospect tournament, which is coming up in about five months. Um, out of the first camp that I went to, uh, Punishment Martinez, who's currently in Ring of Honor, Donovan Dijak, uh, was with NXT, Dal- Dalton Castle came out of that camp as well. Um, there's a number of other guys as well that you've seen throughout, uh, throughout the, the years on, on ring of honor actually came from that very camp, which is kind of crazy. So, um, the ring of honor camps are certainly great if you're, if you're an aspiring wrestler to go to and, and to be seen and, and to get yourself out there. Um, they weren't, you know, in Kevin's own words at the time, they weren't looking for announcers, um, but they had some other projects in mind. They had future of honor in mind. They had women of honor in mind. And so if somebody had presented themselves to them, um, that might make sense for one of the new projects. They, they were going to give it serious consideration, um, but they weren't actively, you know, searching for somebody as far as I know. And, you know, for a while there was a guy named Matt Ryan that also had a few opportunities and he and I had become sort of the team for some of those events. And then over time kind of shuffled in and out and, it, it was it was weird. My my first tryout, I was interviewing Bobby Fish in front of uh, our executive producer, in front of Carrie Silken, who of course kept you know owned Ring of Honor from 2004 to 2011, uh, in front of Adam Cole. My next tryout interview was Adam Cole, um, so it was a little nerve wracking. Uh, the very next day, uh, just out of circumstance, call an event called Future of Honor Two in Laurel, Delaware. And then from there, um, you know, I, I would get one or two matches here and there um, until uh, January 2016, where I started calling some of the, the DVD events and VOD events. And then February 2017 uh, is when I got the news that, that Kevin would be, um, would be leaving Ring of Honor and there would be an opportunity to become the lead announcer. And the first time I heard you, and it's going to make me sound like I didn't do my research, but the first time I really heard you was the Women of Honor event last December. You were the lead guy on that event. And we actually talked to Kelly Klein about that. And she complimented the announcing on that event without prompting, by the way, I wasn't trying to get you some exposure, but she complimented the announcing and you were paired with Nigel McGuinness. Um, Mm -hmm. I guess you've been paired with a lot of different good guys, but I guess the one that you really clicked with has been Colt Cabana thoughts on your partners on the broadcast table. Oh, I've had I've had so many excellent partners. Um, right out of the gate, uh, my very first full event, uh, I was with Steve Carino, and Steve and I get on very very well. And he's a huge Phillies fan, and so Steve and I kind of had an instant connection. He's a Pennsylvania guy like myself, so um, he and I, you know, very close, very friendly. Uh, we still text all the time, never about wrestling, um, always about baseball. And so Steve and I, we, we had a, we, he said, just relax and have a good time. And that was about the best advice anybody could have given me. Uh, Cause I ended up calling the bullet club send off, including AJ Styles last appearance. Um, I, I called a couple of other things uh, of that magnitude for ring of honor in sort of the backup role, sort of the backup quarterback role. Um, from there, I, I'd worked with BJ Whitmer a lot on the individual women of honor matches. And then Nigel McGinnis, for our first two women of honor specials and you know nigel was was a partner I, I very much enjoyed working with uh he had a great knack to call matches um you know in terms of the perspective of a fighter so you know with with nigel he was always somebody that i, I really enjoyed working with but then uh you know it's like different flavors of ice cream so with kevin uh you know kevin i was able to learn some of the different production cues and different uh, you know, ways to handle things and call things and timing. And then it, my favorite by far, and I, I am biased, <laughs> is is Colt Cabana. Um, you know, Colt was always somebody that I really looked up to. He was somebody that did it his own way, found his own path. Uh, somebody who, when one door closed, he kicked open two more and made the most out of those opportunities. So Colt is somebody that, you know, he's a self-made man. He, he's 
made movies. He's obviously got one of the most successful podcasts out there. Uh, just somebody who, who's genuinely funny, a genuine guy. What you see is what you get with Colt. And I'm really lucky to have partnered with. And so the first event that we did together, uh, we went in blind. It was myself, Kevin, and Colt at the 15th anniversary. And, and I hadn't really talked much to Colt, yet alone called anything with him. So we kind of felt out this weird chemistry as it was happening. Um, and then a month later, we were in Baltimore, and, you know, Kevin couldn't make that event. And that's when it kind of became clear that it would just become Colt and myself. And, and Colt asked me, we were at Jimmy's Seafood, he said, hey, uh, who do I got to talk to to do this full time? <laughs> and so it, it was something that, you know, once I kind of got felt the buy-in from him, I got even more confident. And Colt is somebody that really made me feel at ease as well, like Steve did. Uh, he's been around wrestling for nearly 20 years already, which is crazy because he's only, I think, 37. Um, he's somebody who, who's got a finger on the pulse of pop culture. He's got a finger on the pulse of a lot of things, and, and he brings so much value and insight having been in Ring of Honor uh, for so, so long. His first match was in, I believe, December t- 2002, uh, the year that Ring of Honor launched. So, it, yeah, so he's just somebody that can, can speak from experience because he's been there. And uh, he's somebody that, you know, it does a lot of homework, a lot of preparation. Um, he's somebody that, you know, it's it, it may look like we're having fun out there because we are, but you know, before the event goes up, we're we're spending some quality time talking over the matches and the history behind them. So uh, it's been a really great partnership. And no offense to any of the other partners I have. I know BJ Whitmer's is with him too. Uh, right now, Colt and I are kind of in. Are you still there? Oh, yeah. Oh. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. You broke up for just a second. Sorry. You broke up for just a Sorry second. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, no, definitely, and, and as a baseball fan myself, I grew up, I, I hate to tell you this, I grew up a Mets fan, boo hiss, uh, but but I grew, I uh, moved out to Arizona, and we had a good year this year, but last year it was abysmal, um, no offense, but sort of very reminiscent of the year the Phillies ended up having, too, um, and I would watch the games every night, they'd be on in the background while I did other stuff, my wife would always say, well, why do you bother watching this, that you know they're not going anywhere, and it's like, well, <laughs> if nothing else, the announcers are funny, and, and it's true. Right. <laughs> so you guys, as as the announcers, whether the show's good or not, kind of like that Bobby Heenan, Gorilla Monsoon thing, calling squash matches, even if the matches are not great, not that there's ever been a not great match in ROH, because there rarely is, but you guys just add something, and you make even even a match that you're not necessarily looking forward to better. So I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. All right, so here we go. Um, you called some amazing action. You called AJ Styles send off. You called the Women of Honor events, which, you know, I, I'll, I'll ask you that question in a minute, but I think the women need to be more involved in the regular show. But we'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, just amazing things you've called. Christopher Daniels winning the world title for the first time. Cody winning the title. Just, I mean, you got. I think you were probably calling this weekend when Stephen Arnell uh, got involved and, and put, got put yeah. through the table. I mean, the amazing <laughs> things that you've seen. Any favorite memories to this point with Ring of Honor? Well, I, I think my favorite memory was, um, you know, the very first time I was on pay-per-view. And it was in 2016, and I called Steve Carino and BJ Whitmer's Fight Without Honor. And that was the, the very first time I'd been live. Um, I remember right before I came out of the curtain, I, I, I almost couldn't breathe. I felt like somebody stepped on my lungs. Um, but I was so nervous and so excited. And I just remember, you know, Kevin getting me through it. And um, that was probably my favorite because it was my first. And, and just because I remember the feeling and the excitement. The More recently, there's been so many things. Um, you know, AJ Styles' send-off. Uh, Adam Cole's last match in Ring of Honor, somebody who's so important. Um, you know, calling uh, Bobby Fish's last match. Bobby Fish is a, is a good friend. Um, but what was really crazy to me was the, the fact that we had the largest, the largest audience in Ring of Honor history um, this past April at Supercard of Honor. And, you know, sometimes if, if you pay attention to the, you know, what's said on the Internet, you know, uh, a lot of folks are very supportive of Ring of Honor. Some aren't. Um, but we're in the midst of the, you know, the 
biggest attended year in Ring of Honor history, right. uh, with literally the biggest event in Ring of Honor history, and and to call you know the Hardys versus the, the Young, Young Bucks. Bucks in a ladder match <laughs> <laughs> in in front of the biggest crowd in Ring of Honor history with my with my wife and my at the time my six month old son right there uh, was just kind of incredible. So that you know I, I think. My very favorite is, is the first pay-per-view I did, the, the fight without honor with BJ and Steve. But I think, um, you know, more recently, uh, Kevin Colt and I uh, calling that, that ladder match was something special. All right. Excellent. Well, I only have a couple more questions, then I'll let you on with your day. Um, so it's become a bit of a talking point. And I think in recent months it's become maybe a little bit more of an arguable point that Ring of Honor is the number two promotion in the entire world. Uh, it felt that way like a while when I would do interviews with ROH guys, like it was something they were told to say. Now I kind of am starting to believe it. Uh, your thoughts as an ROH announcer, is ROH the number two company in the world? Well, number two in the world is, is tricky. Um, you know, with all all deference, our, our partners, uh, New Japan and and CMLL, who's the, the world's oldest professional wrestling organization, um, they're quite big as well. And we're so lucky to be in partnerships with New Japan and CMLL because uh, it's such a treat to, to you know, with Hiroshi Tanahashi, with Kenny Omega, um, with with all of Los Ingo Bernables de Japón, including uh, Tetsuya Naito. So, I, you know, with all deference to them, I, I think New Japan might have a little bit bigger reach uh, CMLL, you know, does it night after night. They tour seven days a week when they do tour. So, um, you know, those organizations may be bigger, but I, I think Ring of Honor's found a great groove in the United States. And I think we may be the, the second largest in the United States. And it's something where it's, we've gotten there because of, because of smart management and we've gotten there, uh, due to just incremental growth. We haven't tried to rush anything. We haven't tried to, artificially grow faster um you know although cody has signed the biggest deal in ring of honor history uh it's been lucrative for us as well because uh you know because of the merchandise he sells because of the the money that he that so there's a difference um you know companies in the past have, have made giant leaps before and the idea of going head to head with with wwe and WWE, you know, there, there's only been one organization to, to get on cable and stay there for, for over 30 years. And, and so, you know, they deserve all the credit in the world. Um, but I think Ring of Honor, we provide something that's different. We provide all, an alternative. And I always liken it to, to music. I'm a big music fan. Um, I'd much rather go see Elvis Costello uh, than I would Justin Timberlake. And Justin Timberlake is amazing. Uh, but Elvis Costello has a little bit more soul, a little bit more passion, uh, just a little bit more authenticity in what he does um, than than maybe some of the overproduced elements that Justin Timberlake would have on his on his show. Because when you go to see Justin Timberlake, not only are you seeing Justin Timberlake the talent, which is obviously there and obviously a fantastic entertainer, but you also get the stage, the lighting, the the pyrotechnics, the dancers. You don't get to see that stripped down Justin Timberlake. I think why people gravitate to Ring of Honor is I think we're a little bit more raw. I think we're a little bit more authentic. I think we're a little bit more true uh, to what professional wrestling used to be and maybe hopefully back where it's headed. And you're guaranteed to see great wrestling in addition to some of the accoutrements that, that you might find elsewhere. Now, I say that as Ring of Honor continues to produce, uh, improve production values and continues to improve the way we present pay-per-views and things like that. Uh, but I think there's something to be said about, you know, being a part of, of that movement. And it almost feels like, uh, you know, we're at a point where maybe, you know, early new wave and, and early punk kind of came into vogue, like the clash, like Elvis Costello, uh, even a group like REM that is still has a unique sound and still has that soul, but it is still loved by millions. So, you know, it feels like we're at a moment in time where, as we're growing and as we're having the largest audiences ever, uh, we still have that, that heart and that soul that, that was created in the Murphy Rec Center in 2002. Absolutely. It's, it's been an incredible journey. You guys have 
won me over. I wasn't necessarily on the ship from the get go, and you know, as the show's gotten more, a little more polished, but I don't want you to get too polished. I want to keep that little raw feel to it. But with things like Silas Young, with Dalton Castle, with guys with just huge personalities as well as incredible athletes, just all of these things really melting pot into this product. I really think you guys have got something. So kudos to Ring of Honor. And finally, it's kind of another plug for Ring of Honor, but big pay-per-view coming up in just about three weeks. It is going to be the final battle, December the 15th on pay-per-view. Any thoughts or anything you're particularly looking forward to at final battle? You know, this is your final battle. It's going to be amazing, and, and here's why. Um, over the course of the last year, a lot said about Ring of Honor, about... Um, the talent that we cultivated may be moving on, and there was a lot of question marks about how we might replace that talent or, or where we might go or, or what we might do. And over the course of the, of the last year, you know, not only did Ring of Honor you know, replace that talent, but we've established some new stars through their hard work also. So this year's final battle, uh, it, it's really Ring of Honor's signature event, and, and there's no better way to celebrate that with some ROH original talent. And what I mean by that is guys like, you know, who was well on his way to becoming one of the world's biggest stars who signed with Ring of Honor last November and really has grown in, in just to, into a rock star uh, alongside guys like the Young Bucks and, and Cody. Um, guys like Chuck Taylor, who were some of the best kept independent secrets out there and now getting the, the chance after over a decade in wrestling uh, to really show the world what he's all about and, and why he, he is a top competitor. Um, you know, guys that are getting their first shot at, at the big time, like Flip Gordon, who, you know, Ring of Honor also discovered, or, or Punishment Martinez, a guy that had also been around for a decade, um, that is finally getting to show the world what a, what a great athlete he is. So, you know, this year's Ring of Honor is, is really – through and through uh, just a showcase of the talent that has been cultivated and the hard work of the talent that's been cultivated throughout the year in a year that, that there existed a lot of question marks with, with folks in ring of honor, maybe getting different opportunities elsewhere. So I'm really excited because to me, this is, this is always our signature event and this will really ask for more, you know, the top of the card says it all. Um, you know, we have Jay Lethal versus Marty Skrull, and then in the main event, the, the Ring of Honor World Championship, Dalton Castle versus Cody. I, I couldn't think of two better representatives for where Ring of Honor is and where we're going uh, than those than those four men. You know, not only just the two in the main event. So, I mean, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be action packed. If you've never seen a Ring of Honor pay per view before, if you're listening, uh, there's just something there's something different about it, and there's something unique, and it's something you really got to experience at least once. Uh, to to really uh, understand what Ring of Honor is all about. So, you know, if you haven't seen a Ring of Honor pay-per-view before, we invite you to join us. It it is the 15th. Um, it's going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern time. It's available on all pay-per-view carriers. It's available on ROLWrestling.com, uh, the Fight TV app. So it, it's certainly something that we're looking forward to. It It is our biggest event of the year. And so the Young Bucks will be there. Uh, Hangman Page will be there. We know – uh, Flip Gordon will be there. The TV title will be on the line. It's just going to be a, a great um, night of action. And so I'm looking forward to it. one could be the biggest one ever in a year where everything, you know, we, everything keeps getting a little bit bigger for ring of honor. So it feels like we're on the cusp of something special and, and final battle. I think will be a celebration of, some of that. Completely agree. All right, man. I can't thank you enough for spending this time with me before I let you go. Can I just ask you for one final favor? Sure, absolutely. Do you mind giving me a station ID, just saying this is Ian Riccoboni and you're in the wrestling epicenter? Sure, I could do that. Do yeah, want, no problem. Do you want me to do the Wayne's World countdown thing or, or just let you go? <laughs> well, I can do it. Um, all right. And I'm in the, you're in the wrestling epicenter, right? That's correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Three. This is Ring of Honor's Ian Riccoboni, and you are in the wrestling epicenter. All right, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you for that amount of time. I hope I didn't go too long for you. Oh, no, that was perfect. Thanks for, uh, thanks for reaching out. Thank you. You have a great day, and uh, I'll, be, I'll keep watching Ring of Honor and keep telling people that you're good. <laughs> 
Oh, I, I certainly appreciate it. I, I really do. It, it means a lot. Um, there's, there's some pressure. There was some pressure involved. And so to, to hear positive feedback, that's always nice. It, it's reassuring. You know, and I'll tell you this, I'm not easy to please either. There's some announcers out there that I really don't enjoy, and I, I don't mind telling people that. But I'm not saying that just because I'm on the line with you or because I'm doing an interview with you. I really do think you do a good thing. So I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Likewise. All right. Take care. Thank you again for uh, for, for coming on. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Have a great night and a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The Wrestling Epicenter has been around since 2002, and in that time, all these guests, everybody pictured, has been on our podcast. We're more than just a radio show, though, so check out WrestlingEpicenter.com for all your wrestling news and needs.